Our press conference this morning will consist of words from the Red Coalition regarding, number one, the killing of Nikos Spring during the Christmas holidays while being incarcerated at the Bordeaux Detention Center. And number two, the action we're taking to support the family and the overall community. When I say we is the Red Coalition. <clears throat> we will also hear from David Austin, a friend of the family and a member of the community, who happens to also be a professor of humanities at the Department of John Abbott College and a professor of Canadian Studies Department at McGill University. At the request of their recently hired legal team, the family will not be speaking to the media this morning. This is a last second decision and we respect it and we ask that the f everyone here respect that. The family has undergone tremendous, tremendous, tremendous pressure, as you can imagine, and grief. Uh, however, uh, we will help to coordinate media access for the family in due time. Alors, pas ce matin, mais lorsque la famille sera prête, on facilitera l'accès aux médias uh, pour la famille. So, here's what we know so far. Nickers should have been released from the Bordeaux Detention Center following a bail hearing held on December 23rd. The ministry has also confirmed that two other incarcerated persons who appeared for bail on December 23rd, who should also have been released the same day, were also illegally detained and released on the 24th of December. Number three, Nikos was apparently in Bordeaux following a December arrest by SPVM officers, but the family is still seeking answers as to why he was detained by the police that evening. Hier, certains journalistes m'ont demandé pourquoi nous pensions que la mort de Nikos pouvait être liée au racisme systémique. Je sais qu'au Québec, l'utilisation du mot systémique ou le mot en S est moins acceptée que l'utilisation du mot en N, mais je vais ici essayer ce matin de répondre clairement à la question de ces journalistes. Well, it is true that we don't know if the guards that put the spit mask and pepper sprayed Nickus were racist. We don't know that. We can't get into their heads. It is also true that we don't know if they call him the N-word <clears throat> while they try to subdue him or to do these things to him. We don't know that. We can't get into their head or hearts. But here's what we know. Over-policing <clears throat> of lower socioeconomic communities and racial profiling combined with discrimination in courts and the, in the correction system caused disproportionate numbers of black men in prison. That we know. And also that in provincial detention centers, over 75% of inmates are simply awaiting trials and deemed innocent until proven guilty. That's the role of detention centers. So then when he died, you know, Nikos was therefore an innocent man being illegally detained and he was also getting support to he, and he was also getting support to manage his mental health at the time of his death. What we also know is that in November 22nd, a report by the Correctional Investigator of Canada revealed that systemic racism and discrimination was rampant in the federal prisons where black prisoners represent 9.2% of the total incarcerated population, despite representing only about 3.5% of the overall Canadian population. Let that simmer for a minute. That is actually the same representation as African Americans in, in uh, US prisons. Three times the representation in the population. And that what we also know is that more than a third of those 
uh, detainees are young black men aged 18 to 30. That we know that. We also know that the investigation also, the investigation by the federal correction um, uh, investigator revealed that prisoners also re uh, that are more likely to be overrepresented at the maximum security institutions and also involved in, guess what, use of force incidents, that we know that. And number two, during that investigation, black prisoners also relay their experiences of discrimination, differential treatment, stereotyping, racial bias, and consistent use of derogatory or racist language by the prison staff. That's in the report. You all can have access to that. What we also know is that conditions for detainees historically in provincial detention centers, that be in Quebec or elsewhere, are generally worse than in federal prisons. The little that we know about the Quebec Correctional Services is not pretty. For example, according to a 2021 research, Quebec Correctional Services group inmates by skin tones. You're either light, pale, medium, or dark. This, is, this discriminatory classification is not used anywhere else in Canada. Let that sink in for a second. In 2022, after six long years, a black inmate won his case before the Quebec Human Rights Commission, six years, against a prison guard at the Centre de Détention de Rivière des Prairies for having made racist and discriminatory uh, remarks about him, including the N-word. We know that. Furthermore, sources have told the Red Coalition that systemic racism is rampant within the Quebec correctional system. The coroner's report in the death of Joyce Sessiquan, for example, stated that it was undeniable example of systemic racism in the province of Quebec. And just this last September, a wide-ranging report confirmed the existence of racism experienced by employees and patients at the McGill University Health Center, which is Quebec's largest hospital network. So, donc, pour répondre aux journalistes qui pourraient se demander pourquoi nous pensons que la mort de Nikus est reliée <coughs> au racisme systémique, nous leur demandons pourquoi devrions-nous croire que les conditions qu'on retrouve dans les pénitenciers fédéraux et au centre de détention, au centre de santé au Québec seraient différentes de celles qui existent dans les centres de détention provinciaux. Alors la question est aux journalistes qui se posent la question. So, the Minister of Public Security has ordered an internal audit on the incident by the detention center, including the aspect of his of Nikos illegal detention and into the correctional uh, officer's action. We know that. The, correct, the cor coroner's office is also conducting an investigation to determine the cause of death. And the Sotage Quebec has launched a criminal investigation to decide whether criminal charges are warranted against uh, the officer in question. We also know that. However, the investigation by the SQ and the administrative investigation by the Ministère de la Sécurité Publique are not public and their reports will not be made public. The investigation by the coroner's office usually only leads to a very summary report that does not shed light on the actions and possible negligence of the authorities. So therefore, the Red Coalition is calling for more than that. The Coalition this morning is calling for two things. Number one, we will be filing a systemic discrimination complaint, systemic discrimination complaint, with the Quebec Ombudsman regarding the incident at Bordeaux Detention Center and the Quebec Correctional Center, uh, Center's system as a whole. This investigation needs to be conducted using a systemic discrimination lens rather than strictly procedural. 
That's number one. Number two, the Red Coalition is also asking for the following measures to be undertaken. We're asking for the Minister of Public Safety to call for a public coroner's inquiry on the death of Nikos. We're also asking for the immediate release of video footage to the public of the incident if they are available to the immediate release of the video. Number three, we're asking for an independent autopsy. And number four, we're asking, because we need to be proactive in this, we're asking for the creation of a citizen's oversight board for the Quebec Correctional Services. Nicholas was a young and aspiring artist. Some folks have tried to tie him in to rap and all kinds of, you know, dysfunctional behavior and all that. And, and that's often the spin that the media sort of creates right out of the shoot. But he was more than that. He was a son, a grandson, a brother, a cousin, a nephew, a young mentor, and a friend to many. So make no mistakes, folks. The Red Coalition will fight to get justice for Nikus by all avenues available and also to make sure that this will never happen again to anyone. Thank you. I would ask now David Austin to say. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you all for coming out today. I want to start by extending my deepest sympathies and condolences to Nikos' entire family. How did we get here? How did this family get here? It's a question that is most certainly resonating through the minds of everyone in this room. Now take a moment to reflect on that. This family has still not received any adequate information to temporarily subside their anger, frustration, grief, and pain due to the loss of Nikos, who was like Mr. Babino said, a brother, uncle, nephew, friend, a youth mentor, and a grandson. It is inconceivable and unimaginable that they're being tormented by this anguish on a daily basis without answers. What appears to be a combination of lack of experience and illegal detention, and a prison system that needs major reform, a young black man lost his life because of clerical flaws and poor judgment. How are we as a community going to ensure that nothing, I said nothing, like this happens again to any of our loved ones? There is no justification that will appease the devastation Nicholas's family is feeling right now. In a recent 2022 report that was commissioned by the Correctional Investigator of Canada, and there's some things I'm repeating here because it needs to resonate loud and clear, it's revealed that there's rampant systemic discrimination within the federal prison system where black prisoners make up 9.2% of those that are incarcerated, while at the same time, they only make up 3.5% of the entire population of Canada. Those are crazy numbers. We feel that Nichols fell victim to this type of systemic bias and injustice in the provincial system here in Quebec, and we're calling on an immediate investigation to get to the bottom of it. There are too many horror stories that are left unanswered and brushed under the rug as if it didn't exist. We are also, and this is many times I've said this, we're also going to repeat that Premier Francois Legault 
and the entire CAQ government recognize the existence of systemic racism in Quebec, which has never, ever stopped flooding the foundations of the province's institutions, which include the Bordeaux prison facility. We're also demanding that immediate public inquiry be convened by none other than Monsieur François Barandel, the Minister of Public Safety here in Quebec, to investigate the cruel and untimely death of Nikos, who had a full life ahead of him. But it was cut short by inexperienced correctional officers at the Bordeaux prison facility. We're also demanding for the release of any video footage so that it can be released to the family so that clarity and unanswered questions surrounding the last minutes of Nichols's life be made clear. So we need to collectively, not only as a community, but as human beings residing in this province of Quebec and in this country of Canada, bind together so that we can come to some form of understanding and reasoning and move forward to put all of this behind us so this does not happen again. But I'm going to repeat right now, this will happen again. We will see some of you again. And, and that's the, that's the unfortunate uh, truth. It's going to happen. Somebody else will lose their life due to inexperience at Bordeaux, through inexperienced police officers that choose to discriminate against blacks and racialized members of the community just because they don't look like them. So hopefully today, when you go back and complete your stories and put it out, that you put out exactly what we're saying today, somebody lost their life. This is not a joke. That's all I have to say. So if there's any questions, thank you. Et la famille n'y croit pas. On n'y croit pas. La communauté n'y croit pas. Alors, rien de mieux qu'une vidéo, hein, comme les interpellations de police, euh, rien de mieux qu'une vidéo pour démontrer qu'est-ce qui s'est passé vraiment. C'est l'idée derrière ça. Peut-être que je peux te permettre oui. sur la, la, la question de l'autopsie indépendante, c'est pas, pas très courant comme ça. Lorsque, puis il faut, je ne vais pas m'étendre trop longtemps là-dessus, mais M. de Bellefeuille l'a mentionné, puis M. Austin aussi, mais lorsqu'une communauté perd confiance dans ses institutions gouvernementales, la communauté, les communautés ne croient plus à, au rapport ou, ou, ou quoi que ce soit qui sort des institutions gouvernementales. Alors, c'est normal de demander qu'il y ait un, un, une entité séparée ou indépendante qui fasse euh, le travail des entités pour lesquelles la communauté n'a plus confiance. Alors, c'est un gros problème sociétaire. Effective, effectivement, présentement, c'est l'Ombudsman le, le, des services correctionnels qui, qui agit comme un peu comme euh, une entité indépendante de, de, de surveillance ou un rapport annuel, etc. Mais l'Ombudsman, contrairement à celui du, du, du domaine fédéral, a plusieurs départements euh, provinciaux à, à s'occuper. Alors, euh, c'est normal que son rapport ne soit pas vraiment épais. Puis la, la lentille avec laquelle on veut qu'il regarde, c'est la lentille du racisme systémique. Alors, comme on dit, ça l'a sorti au fédéral, puis on a des prisons fédérales ici au Québec. On a des prisons fédérales. Alors, les employés qui travaillent dans ces prisons-là, <rire> ils ont différents uniformes, les employés qui travaillent au Québec. Alors, si ça existe au fédéral, bien, c'est raisonnable de penser que ça existe, ça existe aussi au niveau provincial. Fait en ayant un, un genre de comité séparé de surveillance composée de citoyens euh, de diverses communautés pour justement accompagner peut-être l'Ombudsman euh, <coughs> puis, puis de, de garder un œil sur qu'est-ce qui se passe, peut-être recevoir de, de façon continue des plaintes de, de, de détenus parce qu'il ne faut pas s'oublier non plus que le domaine carcéral 
est un domaine très, très fermé où, un, les gardiens de prison qui subissent le racisme eux-mêmes, de la part de leurs collègues, ils ne veulent pas parler parce qu'ils retournent derrière les murs. Puis encore moins les, les détenus parce que, bon, c'est la loi du silence. Hein? Alors, on, 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 en ayant cette, cette entité euh, séparée, indépendante, communautaire, bien, tu pourrais recevoir des plaintes anonymes et tout ça, puis le passer à l'ombudsman, ça permettrait d'avoir des rapports beaucoup plus pointus vis-à-vis -vis, euh, la discrimination systémique euh, dans les prisons euh, du Québec. Non, on ne rentre pas dans l'administration des gestions du personnel. Là, si on cru que c'était bon, les suspens, c'est une chose, mais les suspensions et les suspensions, ça, c'est un processus... De, euh, c'est un processus ah, administratif, euh, on, on s'embarque pas là-dedans, mais c'est vraiment pas euh, suffisant pour qu'est-ce que nous, on demande. On ne demande pas le, le, qu'une perso per personne individuelle, on, on regarde ça au niveau systémique et, et, et continu, parce que ces gens-là qui ont été suspendus ont des superviseurs qui répondent à des superviseurs, des gestionnaires, puis il y a un système complet. Puis c'est le système complet qu'on veut qu'il qu soit examiné. Par le gouvernement, you see? And so, by having this independent inquiry, uh, well, of course, the independent inquiry by the chief coroners, as well as an independent uh, autopsy, then we'll give some reprieve and, and solace to the family that finally we're getting the right, um, the right answer to our questions. And so it's a question of trust, really. Uh, we'll just go a third one there. Um, is there a, a model for this independent oversight that you're calling for? Uh, there are some uh, independent oversight in terms in Ontario. There's some some uh, police boards that are independent. That's one thing. And there's also there's also in Ontario, for example, there's a, there's also a civilian uh, sort of a, a police uh, oversight mechanism that exists aside from the SIU, which is like the BEI here, and, and also the uh, the Police Ethics Commission is also that looks at the administrative functioning of the policing so, but so there are some some models out there and uh, the coalition would be happy to work with uh, with the government in, in developing something like that uh, but but it's a question of having the community involved in uh, in, the, in, the, in in the oversight of the the institutions it's supposed to be there to protect them mm -hmm. okay so that's the mm -hmm. idea Well, the family is not here. As I mentioned this morning, a family decided, uh, you know, they've undergone horrific, as you can imagine, horrific, horrific uh, last couple of weeks. Uh, and uh, uh, legal advice, uh, upon obtaining legal advice, they've decided also based on how they felt. And we have to respect that. And we have to go along with it. Uh, we would love to have had them this morning, but at the same time, this is not the run of the mill. Um, racial profiling case, and I'm not trying to diminish by any stretch of imagination racial profiling of any sort. We're talking about the death of an individual. And so I'm not sure how I would feel if my son had, had died this morning, would I be here talking like this? And so we have to respect that. And, and in due time, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the guarantee that the, the access will be provided to the media in due time. Do you know um, if anybody from, you know, any level of government has reached out to them to offer sympathy. We have, uh, I, I read somewhere that Mr. Bonadella offered sympathy. I think, I, I think that's safe to say, but I mean, I can't, I can't corroborate this in any way, shape, or form. It came out of some of your media, and so I have to go by that. But you other know, than that, I don't know personally. No, I don't. I, any questions? Anybody? I think we can talk a bit more about. Bonardel, you know, new to the post, are you, do you feel that he is bringing a different sort of air to the um, provincial processes? Have you been communicating with him at all? Anything like that? Um, He's a politician. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I try to stay out of that. Um, no. I, I mean, yes, he, you know, new a few months uh, as of October. Uh, there, there's been actually some events that we've, uh, we've organized. We've invited the, uh, the Minister of Public Safety, Mr. Bonadel, uh, as well as uh, Minister uh, Skeet, uh, Christopher Skeet. Um, 
and a few others. Uh, it was in discussion of uh, you know the recent decision on, on Article 636. And uh, we heard crickets uh, from uh, Mr. Uh, Minister Bonardel. Um, so as a Red Coalition and as myself personally, uh, no, I don't think he's doing enough right now. Um, in fact, he should be here. There should be some elected officials here. Uh, you know, when they were vying for, for seats uh, in the National Assembly, uh, there was a lot of them that were quick to preach uh, about uh, discrimination, systemic uh, discrimination and racism. Uh, Bill 21, 96, and, you know, I could go on. Um, where are they now? Where have we seen past that? So to answer your question, Luca, um, no, I don't believe uh, Mr. Bernadel is, is doing enough, uh, providing sympathy you know, to a family is, is, is not enough. He needs to hit, hit the ground, be out there, uh, and, and ensure, and not wait for uh, organizations to call for a public inquiry. Um, he was able to say that there was, um, he was illegally detained. So if you knew he was illegally detained, so then why don't you go further steps and say, you know what, we need to launch a public inquiry as to why, because somebody lost their life due to mismanagement, clerical errors, the processing of simple documents that happen day in and day out. And of course, the poor young man lost his life because of that. So no, I'm going to say it again. No, I'm not satisfied with what I'm seeing so far. Um, and I, I don't mind being quite vocal about that. So if he's listening, you're not doing enough. To be fair, he did say publicly he wanted an inquiry into it. I, in that statement, he didn't say whether he wanted it to be public or uh, private. I understand you're asking for it to be, pr to be public, rather. Uh, I want a Lamborghini. Am I going to get it? Uh, there's a lot of things that I want, a lot of things that everybody in this room wants. So if he wanted a public inquiry, he needs to go to the next step and actually do it. You understand? That, that's... That's the simple side of things. It doesn't need to be political. We're talking about a human who lost her life. And it's that simple. It's that black and it's that white. There's no gray in between here. Understand? Thanks. But on a positive swing. <laughs> but on a positive swing, we're, we're, he's a new man. Looking forward to, you know, working with the government and, and, and of course, you know, with this public inquiry, the co chief coroners that we're going to be calling for, we're, we're hoping there's going to be some collaboration. But but uh, Joel is right. I mean, thus far. Uh, but you know, we got a spray, spit guard, and then the water. It acted like like a waterboard, so he was suffocating. Um. So, obviously. It, you know, it, it, that's the inexperience that we're talking about. So the the uh, and again, as we, I mentioned, we have sources. I mean, that's how we operate. You guys operate with sources. We operate with sources, uh, and of course, we're protecting our sources, and that's very important. Uh, one of the things that David mentioned, and we all mentioned, is a systemic aspect. But that's part of that systemic aspect. There's the training. Uh, you know, in 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 CIGEP, of correctional officers, mm -hmm. right? There's a program at the CGEP level of correctional officers. So we want to know, as part of a systemic investigation into the correctional sphere, we want to know what, what, are, what are they being taught at the CGEP level. And then when they go to Nicolette, because then they have to go to Nicolette, there's a special, I can't, I'm not sure the length of time in Nicolette, because I'm more familiar with the police um, training. But we need to know what they're being taught in Nicolette. So that's all part of the systemic sort of overview or review of what is going on there. And if they were inexperienced, well, if, if one or two officers are inexperienced, but they have supervisors that are supposed to be experienced and knowledgeable. And, and we understand mm -hmm. that one of the people that got suspended is a supervisor that was, that ordered, okay, that's some of the stuff that came out of you all, that ordered one of the officers to, 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 to pepper spray um, Nicholas. So again, it's, uh, I don't want to blame it s simply on inexperience because that would give them an, an open door. It's systemic. That's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah.
C'est une demande de la coalition ce matin. On dit qu'avoir une vidéo, un, ça famille, douleur, au moins, qu'est-ce qui s'est passé, d'avoir la bonne réponse. Puis ça permet aussi à la communauté, euh, au, au, grand, au large, à large, la grande communauté de savoir qu'est-ce qui se passe, qu'est-ce qui s'est passé vraiment. Parce que là, on a Ça fait que c'est toute partie de cette transparence qu'on trouve dans le milieu. Can you, can you guys clarify sort of uh, your role vis-à-vis -vis, uh, family? Well, we were, we were essentially mandated by the family to basically do this, okay? Speak, uh, you know, that speak on behalf of, uh, but also report some of their impression of feelings with respect to the whole environment. That, that was their initial mandate, yes. Thanks of the guards, your understanding of, of their experience comes from uh, a source that you have within the British. Well, we, 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 we were not saying where the source comes from, but we have sources all over the place, and, and that's part of the information. That's some of the information when we piece it all together. That's one of the things that came out. But again, You know, there's going to be a, an administrative investigation. There's going to be a number of investigation that's going to either confirm what we, because the source is as good as the corroboration that comes with, you know what I mean? Like, we can't hang our hat on everything that the source says. We need to corroborate all this. But, uh, yeah, we have sources. 